right, back for another round. Elbow pie, New Year's Eve. And playing this round without any driver or wood. It's just irons only. Shout out to Donuts. You know it, no warm up. I'm gonna try and break 85 today. To all lines. Right down the middle of the fairway. What a start. I am going to do some uh, commentary again over the top. Just playing my second in to the first hole here, which is actually the 14th hole, <coughs> starting on the 14th at Albert Park. And I played a really good approach shot there, and it's held onto the green. Uh, as I said, the goal for this uh, round was to try and break 85 with no warm up, and I haven't got a driver or any of my 5 wood or 3 wood in the bag. So it's going to be all irons. First hole that I'm playing the 14th is pretty short, but you know, it was a really good tee shot and really good approach, so always good to start with an easy par. Um, would have been nice to be one under, but not to be. Um, and as I said, I'm trying to break 85, but uh, after a number of holes on this round, I did reset my goal to be trying to break 80. It could just be uh, d delusional confidence coming off the last round where I shot 74 in New Zealand at Akaroa Golf Club, which was very short, of course. And Albert Park is also really short. Um, as a public golf course in the middle of downtown Melbourne, next to where the Formula One race is held every year on Albert Lake, Albert Park Lake. And I've flared my tee shot out to the right. I'm playing a second, trying to get over that bunker. And just short which leaves me now in a seriously little, little bit of trouble on the second hole, trying to scramble up and down to make a bogey and <clears throat> not let this round get away from me early, which I tend to let it do way too often. There's some warm. Just reiterating what I said on camera there, it was seriously hot this day. I started about 4 o'clock in the afternoon um, on New Year's Eve and the course, I pretty much had it to myself. Long bogey putt, misses, uh, tap in for double, terrible start on the second hole. <clears throat> but yes, it was scorching hot, so I knew hydration and fatigue was going to be a big part of this round. I thought when I hit that approach shot that that was seriously close to the pin from my uh, view it looked like it almost went in so I'm wondering if it maybe spun back a little bit with the sandwich. Either way, really good look for birdie uphill and I never really gave it a chance, pretty average putt. Two over through three, pretty happy with that start to be honest and now we go to a really probably the easiest hole on the on the course, it's a very short par 4, but the only thing you can't do is go left. So, play the penalty on the easiest par 4 on the course. I could have hit a 9 iron probably. That is very, very disappointing. That was just a colossal bad mistake on this hole. I really, you know, I just kicked myself. I did find my ball, it was unplayable, so I've had to take a penalty drop out, and I'm now trying to chip on for three. Um, in retrospect, 
maybe I just got to club down even more and make sure I just hit 8 iron or something through the gap. Ah, just on the edge. Got a long par putt here. Um, unlikely to make it, but you know, bogey on probably the easiest, ho easiest hole on the course where it really could have just been a 9 iron lob wedge. Um, is a pretty pretty disappointing outcome. It takes me to three over through uh, three over through four, um, whereas it you know could have easily been a lot better than that. Onto the long 18th, which is par five, uh, and using iron on this hole is probably off the tee is going to be one of the harder ones all day. Um, you can see it's so hot that I'm having to use the towel pretty much every every hole, uh, every shot of every hole. Um, and what I do find funny now looking back on this is that, as you'll see in a minute, there's a butterfly that comes flying in and disrupts me as in my warm-up or practice swing. Anyway, I just play through it and rush, rush the shot. In retrospect, uh, I could tell it was annoying me. It was in my line of sight. It turns into be uh, a pretty poor shot. I should have just stopped and regrouped. At least on this hole, if you flare it out to the right, it actually kind of get you get away with it. And yes, um, funny, I'm yelling out at old mate who's on, who's chipping onto the practice screen. who hadn't even seen me that I'm hit, trying to hit it down the middle of the fairway. Uh, I've got a long way to go, so I'm pulling five iron here and just trying to advance it down the very narrow gap of the fairway. And I hit a really good one here. I just crush it. And I loved his uh, reaction just watching it fly over his head. He loved it. I think this has to be one of my best shots of the day. Uh, 8 iron from 145 meters out. I absolutely murder this thing into the wind and send it high up over the trees. Let's see it again. Pause it there. Just how much more balanced my swing looks than in the past. It looks so much better. And one of the reasons I, on, on that is that I'm deliberately trying to keep my right arm tucked in much closer to my body on the downswing and follow through, which I normally used to flare out chicken wing style. Considering the poor tee shot to be on the green in three, having a long birdie putt, I'm ecstatic about that. To, uh, that was the last of the holes back towards the clubhouse into a pretty stiff wind even though it doesn't show it was a pretty uh pretty strong wind i was playing back into so i know that if i can finish with a par here um i've done really well and i can turn with the wind behind me for a number of holes to start the front nine I mark it and I go ahead and tap it in for par and that's some really good momentum to finish out the 18th hole and head to the first as I reassess and try to break 80 instead of 85. Turn with the wind behind us now. That was a 5 iron off the tee, 188 metres downwind, uh, works out really well just on the edge of the fairway. i got to go pretty much straight over this tree, the pin is pretty much behind the tree trunk. got a 9 iron. Hit it pretty well, just lose it slightly to the right which is going to be a very difficult up and down chip shot. Uh, short sighted, bad miss. Um, but what you'll see here is that I go ahead to play probably one of the best chip shots I've ever played in my life. You have no idea how difficult this was. There's basically no green. Had to land it on a penny in order to uh, get it close and, and I really do a great job of it which is cool. I should point out too that in order to break 80 we need to be 7 over or less. Uh, uh, being a past 72 that would get it in at 79. 
so there's not a whole lot of room for error uh, but I know that we're into the downhill holes downwind holes and they're not overly long and there's still the stretch down uh, the middle part of this course where you get four par fives and six holes Start on the flag, hopefully end up middle of the green. That was a gap wedge into the second, about 100 metres. Didn't hit it perfectly, but found the middle of the green, so I can't complain. Hit a pretty good putt there, I uh, got it on the right line, my putting is still pretty bad, I feel so much more uncomfortable with this putter than the one I used, my old one in New Zealand, which is interesting. Likewise the irons feel a lot heavier. That's another striped 5 iron down the middle of the fairway, 176 metres on my Garmin stats, leaving a pitching wedge into the green, um, and it's just straight over the palm tree. Okay, so I have to point out that was a bad miss to the left because this shot was so tricky. I had to make sure I get it uphill to the green. It was a good meter uphill and could not leave it short because it was quite thick rough. So basically I was dead and just ended up over the green um, and a par putt hoping to get out of here probably with a bogey and move on. Pretty disappointing pitching wedge in. I just don't think enough I think in those situations of where I I want to miss and just making sure that I probably need to be a little bit less aggressive but easier said than done when you've got a pitching wedge in your hand downwind. Guys, it's seriously hot. However, these next two holes are going to be crucial. Because after that, there's four par fives and six holes. So I'm four over. I'm changing my goal here. Try and go under 80. So that's going to have to be seven over or less. Right, one more hole downwind. Forgot about this one. Again, just try and straight, straight down through that gap. Casual 197 metre, 5 iron off the tee there, downwind. Uh, that's pretty awesome, I've got to say. Really striking it well. This shot, I just never feel comfortable over. If you go left here, it's out of bounds. I always tend to, when I play this hole, chicken out a little bit, can't commit to the swing, and always seem to come up a little bit short, so it's all mental. That was a tight swing. Regroup up this hole. Pick right up and down here. Back to down down there. Just onto the edge of the green and roll. There's also slope off the left. One of the reasons the last two rounds have really improved my score is that my short game, chipping around the greens or about 50 metres out has really improved. Uh, I've worked hard on it, it's making a massive difference. Just missed the slope. Damn it. 
Annoying to make a, a mess of that hole a little bit on not too far out for the second shot um, But I'm also struggling a little bit with the heat and I know that on the next hole There's a water fountain pretty much the only one on the course So I'm just trying to hang in not make any major double bogeys here or anything like that And I know that if I can get to the water on the next hole, which I'm hoping is there I'm not a hundred percent because of the COVID situations. You never know if the fountains actually working or not uh, but I'm desperate to get a lot of water, rehydrate, fill up the water bottle, and then really make a charge on the par fives. Okay, time to regroup. Gets a lot of water. I'll try and play the back of the stance a bit. Oh, this could be a round saver. We got water. Oh yeah, drink that bird stuff up. That's it, but it's not too bad. One of the trickier par fours on this course is without a good tee shot um, leaves a long second in where I, I was trying to hit four iron in there so I've done well to get it on the green. The putt just misses for par but you know bogey not a, not the worst result. Now I head into the four par fives and six holes um, at six over so I've only got one more shot to play with for breaking 80. Uh, the pressure's on. I decided to pull 4 iron here, being a par 5. Uh, I don't feel overly comfortable over it, so I just opened the face slightly and I had a really good one. Good bounce. Hello, friend. Pocket twos. I got 100 meters in here, sandwich, hit a really nice one again, onto the green, um, pretty happy with that. And one of the things I'm going to do after this round, I'm going to rate the f facets of my game, the putting, the chipping, the wedges, the long, the mid irons, all out of 10. I'm going to add it up, I'm going to have an honest score, uh, and see what it all looks like. 30 putt here, boom, drops it, and I'm ecstatic. That's huge for the scorecard, that gets me back sniffing, trying to break 80. Come on. Let's take another look. Why not? Shout out to Albert Park Golf Course. Talk about amazing condition. I pretty much got it to myself. Guys, if you want to know where to play golf and have the course to yourself, do it on New Year's Eve late in the afternoon <coughs> when nobody else is around. I have to say, I don't remember having this kind of consistency with the irons, where I'm just feeling so comfortable and confident standing over the ball. Uh, it's definitely got to do with um, a little bit of swing change. I'm still too steep in the swing. There I am just crushing another um, four iron. 210 meters down the middle of the fairway, uh, downwind. So I've got a green light to go for the green and two here. Um, Although you'll hear me talk afterwards about course management and whether or not um, this was the right decision in the scheme of things when it uh, could have been a pretty easy three shot hole. Um, instead I try to rip a powerful four iron pretty much uh, as hard as I can to, for the upside reaching into. A couple of times on this round I set up the camera slightly further to the right. And I think it really um, gives a much more uh, awesome and impressive uh, view of the shot. So when there's cool backgrounds like that, I'm going to try and do it more often. That wasn't very smart course management. I'm thinking about it again now. I probably couldn't have reached, but I had to really get out all of it. So I would have been better playing a 5 iron or a 6 iron, making sure it was in a good spot. Now it's going to be a very tricky 
chip shot over the bunker with no green to work with. Probably not going to have a look at birdie. It's worse. The longest better. That's why I was so annoyed walking up to this shot because I knew that was just the only place you can't go is right. It's I didn't think about it clearly it's a long enough. Birdie putt. And it's made it a good look for birdie into a scramble for par, which is very, very annoying on that downwind par five. Sure enough, I take a bogey here and I give back the bloody birdie from the last hole straight away from where I was in the middle of the fairway with an iron into a par five. I am steaming heading to a, heading to the next hole. right of the pin trying to get the wind to just push it slightly to the right pin high just another awesome shot Weak birdie part, can't be leaving any birdie parts short. That's my motto going forward, no birdie parts short. Weak part, very disappointing birdie part. I'm six over, five holes to go. I've got one shot to play with. This is a short par five, or shortish. Time to try and find another birdie. How good is it when I'm setting up and trying to play a draw down the fairway and I actually pull it off? I'm actually shot shaping now. Huge. It's not too bad actually, down the left slope. This right here is four iron and I can't hit this thing any better. Sound is like a gunshot. This is in kind of into the wind and that's done really well to almost reach the green. I mean I've crushed that. Finally hit one clean. Had a feeling I was going to hit a good chip here, so I thought, why not? I'll change the view up, try and get my shot and the flag. How good is that? I mean, how well am I playing when I'm just putting in those kind of chip shots? Close to the pin, another birdie look. I feel like, you know, this is, this is on, this breaking 80. I'm going through the process here of showing the whole camera setup. Um, you know, I don't, I like to think that uh, everyone knows that I'm not cheating, but you know, sometimes it's good just to show the whole setup, just to show that you know I'm going through the putt. I'm not re-putting it. You know I'm trying to break 80, uh, honestly. So there's ups, there's downs, but you're only cheating yourself if you're if you're not doing it honestly. So there you go. That is a top birdie. Five over. Two shots to play with over four holes. We're going to 80. Holding it together well. Wow, that was a great birdie. That was awesome. I get back to the other bogey from the par uh, five of a birdie. We've got an eight iron here. I'm trying to. It's a pretty narrow par three. You can't go anywhere out to the right. Trees all to the left. But I feel pretty confident the way I'm playing. I hit it really well, it's downwind. Just miss, I know it's up close, somewhere to the right. Just slightly right. 154 meter 8 iron there, so I don't know if it was a bit of adrenaline chasing the 80, but I'm hitting it really well, striking the ball perfectly well. Um, but I'm in the bunker here and the pressure's on because there's no room for error when trying to break 80 with only a couple of shots to play with and three holes to go and having not really been in the bunker more than once or twice I don't really know what the sand is going to do I'm no expert out of the bunker, I don't practice it enough and here I go on flight over the green and into the rough
Double buggy it is, and those two shots are gone. So there's now no room for error with three holes to go into another par five. Right, we've just used up our two shots to keep it under 80. So I have to go par, par, par. This is a downwind par five. Good tee shot, sets it up. It's going to be a pretty easy hole. Guys, don't forget, stick around after the video. I'm going to rate all the facets of my game out of 10. It's going to add up to a score out of 40. It's going to be honest appraisal. Um, yeah, it's new to the vlog, so let's see what it's like. One of the reasons I'm using all lines is that I've got a match play game coming up against my cousin. Uh, he beat me a year ago. Went two under, hit it on the par threes. I think he made a birdie putt from off the green to, to close out the match. So uh, I'm not feeling comfortable with the driver. This is a warm up. Shout out to Holgate if you're watching. Uh, I believe we're going to be playing in a couple of days time after this post. So you're in trouble. Well, I ran out of battery, I discovered, after getting a very nice up and down for par there. Made about a three foot putt for par. So, we've gone to the cell phone coverage for the last two holes. We're still seven over. No wind. On the green, pin high, just on the left. That was a really good approach. 809 again, uh, it's been a go to club. Um, a long birdie putt, quite long, and you know, this can be a really tricky long par 3. So, to get out of here with a par and go to the 13th, which is the last hole of the round, with a look at breaking 80 with another par, um, that would be really cool, and that's exactly what happens. One of the things I've been doing really well in this round and the last round is leaving uphill putts. You know, they look a little bit longer used to feel really uncomfortable over them, but when they're just uphill, they're so much straighter and easier to hit. It'll be a long way in from there. And here we are. Approach shot into the green. You know, I'm really dialed in here. It's amazing how much more focused I am with the score on the line. Um, taking my time. Want to put a good swing on it. This is a long way out. This is a six iron. I have to flush it. There's pressure on. Can I do it? And I had a really good one. I know it's like close to the green, maybe slightly off the edge, but I've got to be really happy with that. Up and down to break 80. Come on. Here we are, trying to get up and down to break 80. Trying to get as close as possible, take the pressure off the putt. I hit it okay. It probably runs about 8 feet past. Not my best chip, but you know, as you can see, I'm lining it up. It's pretty straight. I've got it coming off the left slightly. Can I put a good strike on it? Break 80. This is it. Come on. Ooh. Boom. Scorecard's in. We're in for 79. Five, seven over. Two over on the front nine. Five over on the back nine. You guys, that's twice in a row breaking 80. Um, ecstatic. The swing's feeling really good. I do want to shallow it out and make a few 
few changes. It's still too steep, but it's heading in the right direction. Uh, I've got the big game coming up against Holgate in a few days' time. Um, and now what I want to do is, as I said earlier in the round, I want to break down the four facets of my game. And let's get straight into it. So we'll start with the long and the mid irons. Overall, I had some really good tee shots all day. Five irons especially, some good ones with the four iron. Um, just, you know, really, really improving with my iron play. So without the driver, it was great to see and, and help drive a low score. So going to give myself 7.6 there. Um, wedges, I had some really nice approach shots. I'm thinking of the 14th, the first shot of the day. The 16th where I put it in close. There are another, a number of others that led to nine greens in reg. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give myself a really good number there of 8.7. Chipping, I was really happy with this today. There were a couple of extraordinarily good ones. Um, the up and down on one from a short-sighted position, and then the shot over the bunker led to the birdie on nine was super impressive. Um, there are a couple of like shaky ones, but overall, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 8.4. Putting, it was a huge improvement, even though I, knew, I don't feel comfortable. The stroke looks terrible. I've got to do something about it, maybe a lesson. Um, I did make two birdies and I made a huge putt on the last hole in order to break 80, so can't be too hard on myself. Let's call it an 8.1. Totals up, 32.8 out of 40. Awesome round, broke 80, that's twice in a row. I think it's time to step it up and play a harder course now. So, you know, I hope you're enjoying the content. Hit the subscribe button. Let's try and get to 50 subscribers uh, by the end of the month. That'd be cool.